Hello. In this video, we will be looking at a few new features of the 2018 version of ADF's Cosmos. Uh, so to begin, we will uh, first discuss the implementation of Unifac. Uh, the Unifac method can be selected uh, in the Methods tab. It's right below Cosmos and Cosmosec. It's an alternative to these methods. It's also a liquid phase activity coefficient model meaning essentially anything you can do with Cosmo RS and Cosmosec, you can also do with, with Unifac. So as a, an example calculation, uh, we'll first click on Unifac, and uh, you see that of many of the available properties we had for Cosmo RS, we still have quite a few of them. Uh, in, in general, the vapor liquid equilibria properties have not been implemented yet, so you'll notice that a, a few things related to those will be grayed out. Um, but, for example, if we want to do an activity coefficient calculation uh, with water and methanol, and let's say we're interested in uh, the activity coefficient of ibuprofen in a 0.3 to 0.7 water methanol system, we can simply hit run, and Unifac does the calculation just like Cosmos would. So that's uh, just from selecting Unifac, and uh, you can explore the various properties that that are available. Uh, of course, support for those that are grayed out will be coming uh, either in a development snapshot in the not-so-distant future or in our 2019 software release. Uh, we can go back to Cosmos here. Uh, another new feature we have is um, if you go to compounds, list of added compounds, you can now add compounds by smile string. Uh, so this is now an alternative to adding compounds to the um, Cosmo RS database. Uh, previously, you had to do an ADF calculation and a uh, Cosmo single point calculation after that to get the uh, surface charges. Uh, but now these can be estimated with, with a fast QSPR method. So, uh, so for example, we can type something like uh, pentanol and simply click add it'll prompt us to save. So we'll save this uh, pentanol as a CompKF file. And you see, essentially, immediately, all of the relevant Cosmo RS related properties that are required for Cosmo RS calculations are, are estimated. So uh, surface area and volumes. And that also applies for sigma profiles. So we can take a look here at pentanol. And uh, for the sake of comparison, we'll also add uh, the pentanol from the Cosmo RS database uh, just to have a look. So you see, uh, in this case, our estimated pentanol is in red, and it, it does uh, approximate the Sigma Profile database pentanol quite well. Uh, so these smile strings are readily available uh, on a number of, of platforms. Uh, for example, if we were interested in ibuprofen, you could simply just go to the ibuprofen Wikipedia page. And if they have smiles available, uh, we'll change to English. Okay. They, for some reason, only have the smiles on the English page. We can simply copy that. OK. And save this as ibuprofen. And you see that, uh, again, it is estimated based on the QSPR method. If we then take a look at the sigma profile of this and compare it to the ibuprofen in the Sigma Profile database, we again observe uh, a good agreement. So this, this uh, fast Sigma Profile estimation method uh, can be used in lieu of an ADF calculation. Of course, if you have the time to spare, it's always recommended to, you to do an ADF calculation because those results will be more accurate and our Cosmo RS parameters are parameterized for, um, for the ADF uh, Cosmo files, but uh, if you have a large database and, and cannot afford to do an ADF calculation on each compound in that database, 
uh, this is this is a good method to quickly estimate the sigma profiles and Cosmo RS related parameters uh, in order to perform uh, liquid phase activity coefficient calculations on uh, on those compounds. So uh, I should mention that it also works for for CosmoSAC, uh, and that'll be the 2016 uh, ADF implementation of CosmoSAC sigma profiles. Uh, so in the same vein, we are we've also added a property estimation suite. Uh, so this, uh, for many activity coefficient models, uh, there are many properties for which experimental data is required. Uh, for example, solid liquid equilibrium calculations require uh, the enthalpy of fusion and melting point. And this is a way to do it, um, to, to estimate those if experimental data is not available or is hard to come by. Uh, so yeah, so for example, we can take a look at ibuprofen and pentanol again. Uh, and so putting those in, uh, all of the compounds in the 2018 ADF CRS database uh, have smile strings as one of the properties, so that will be read automatically. And ibuprofen was the compound we inputted by smile string, so that smile string is retained. And so here you see a number of important physical properties are estimated, boiling point, critical pressure, critical temperature, so on and so on. Uh, in particular, I'll highlight the enthalpy of fusion and melting point. Um, so those those two will be needed for solid liquid equilibrium calculations. Um, this uh, property estimation tool uh, is also embedded in the uh, compounds, uh, list of added compounds menu here, this, uh, this window. Uh, so for a few things where properties were normally expected to be input from experimental data, these can now be estimated. So uh, Again, in the case of ibuprofen, if we wanted to do a solid solubility problem, for example, we could just estimate these by clicking the Estimate button. Uh, the final new feature I will discuss is uh, solvent optimization. So here there's, there's a new tab uh, called Solvent Optimizations, and you'll notice there are uh, two problem types underneath this tab. Uh, the first is solubility, so we'll take a look at that first. Uh, the idea with this problem is we, we would like to specify some list of solvents. We'll take these. Uh, maybe take water off. I don't know. Of course, this can be uh, customized and, and played around with to a large degree. So let's say, again, we'll use our ibuprofen example. What this what this does is that it allows you to specify uh, a number of solvents uh, you might be interested in. So for the industrial chemist, these might be solvents that are cheap or re readily available. For the lab chemist, these might be things that are on the lab shelf. But uh, these essentially just represent the design space for a solubility problem. So we'd like to choose uh, the best solvent system out of these possibilities uh, that, in this case, for this problem type, maximizes the solubility of ibuprofen. Uh, of course, the uh, minimize option can also be chosen. Uh, you can specify t uh, one temperature or a temperature range. Uh, running this problem, uh, because I chose the ibuprofen from, from the uh, ADFCRS database, so we can take a look at that again. Choose now this ibuprofen and use this estimate feature. Since we're doing solid uh, solubility, we need uh, the melting point and enthalpy of fusion. So go back to optimize solubility, and now hopefully this, this ought to work. So this will look through the solvent space and find for us that 2-hexanone uh, maximizes the mole fraction solubility of ibuprofen. So for our final problem type, it is. Uh, it concerns liquid-liquid extraction. So in this case, rather than specifying one solute, we'll specify two solutes, uh, which we'd like to separate uh, into two distinct liquid phases. So again, we'll specify a superset of solvents from which we'd, we'd like to do this uh, extraction. So this problem will look at, at the superset of solvents and design a, uh, a two-phase liquid system with the mole fractions uh, for each phase calculated and it will 
try to maximize the distribution coefficient of acetic acid and water. Uh, in this case, the two solutes we're trying to separate. So in the case of acetic acid, you'll see that it doesn't occur in the solvent set here. And what that means is that we will we'll estimate its uh, distribution across the liquid-liquid phase barrier with its uh, infinite dilute activity coefficient. And water, should it appear in the liquid uh, mixture, then we'll just use the uh, mole fractions that, that are represented in the two different liquid phases. So running this problem, it is a slightly harder problem, but it should generally converge unless you specify all solvents that are miscible. In that case, you won't be able to design a liquid system with two distinct phases because everything will, will uh, just want to be in one phase. Uh, so in this case, it chooses water and dimethyl carbonate uh, as two phases. Uh, these phases could contain multiple compounds, but in this particular example, it just turns out to be a simple binary system so with water and dimethyl carbonate. And here you get a distribution coefficient as well as uh, partition ratios. So in phase one, we expect water to be there uh, in a 35 to 1 ratio uh, compared to phase two. And uh, the phase one, phase two partition ratio of acetic acid is 1 to 6.6. 6. So that, um, that summarizes the new features in the 2018 ADF CRS. Uh, as always, please let us know if you have any questions about any of the new features or uh, if you'd like to see a, a feature that, that we don't support yet.